Some words hide the truth. Just as torture is named enhanced interrogation and the logging of old growth forests is called the Healthy Forest Initiative, so also prostitution is named a choice, a job, work, a victimless crime, and on Craigslist it's called a wide range of personal meeting and relationship opportunities. <laughs> These pimp messaged slogans are good for business, but there's not much truth to them. What's wrong with prostitution is the renting out of a woman's mouth, vagina, or anus, and what that does to her psychologically. What's wrong with prostitution and what's wrong with buying sex are the same things that are wrong with other forms of violence against women, incest, rape, and battering. I've been researching prostitution for 15 years. We've interviewed 900 women, men, and transgendered people in prostitution in nine countries on five continents. And over the course of that time, we've also interviewed 500 Johns. Prostitution is not a choice because the precise conditions that make a choice are absent. For example, equality with buyers and physical safety and real alternatives. If you imagine a pyramid, remember that only about the top 5% of all women in prostitution are at the top of that pyramid. These are people that are privileged by race and class. The other 95% don't have those kind of privilege or alternatives for escape. Let me give you some examples of the sex inequality, the race, ethnic inequality, and the economic inequality in prostitution that are often invisible. A woman in Lusaka who knew that five blowjobs would get her a sack of mealy meal to feed her kids. That's not a choice. A woman in India who worked in an office where she concluded that she might as well be paid for the sexual harassment that was expected of her anyway in her job. That's not a choice. The teen in California who said that in her neighborhood, boys grew up to be dealers and pimps and girls to be hoes. She was the third generation of prostituted women in her family. And prostitution more severely harms people who are indigenous or ethnically marginalized because of their lack of alternatives. That's not a choice. Or the young woman sold by her parents in a brothel in Nevada. She took six different psychiatric drugs to make it through the day selling sex. That's not a choice. Or Ashley Dupre, who was bought by Governor Spitzer. Dupre ran away from what she called an abusive home at 17. She'd been homeless. She had a drug problem. A convicted New York pimp bragged that he turned her out. And at 17, pornography was made of her by a man who had a, a prostitution conviction. The Ampers Club, where Spitzer bought her, was run by pimps who charged a lot because they said it was high class, call girl, but it was the same as any other pimps. They took their 50% cut off the top. Like a majority of Johns, Spitzer most likely enticed, coerced, or persuaded her with money to put her life on the line by not using a condom. That's not a freely made choice. Women in prostitution face a statistical likelihood of weekly rape. A, Can a Canadian woman in prostitution said, what's rape for others is normal for us. A woman at a legal brothel in Nevada said, it's like you sign a contract to be raped. And in Chicago, the same frequency of rape was reported by women in both escort and street prostitution. Women in prostitution are seen as body parts or fake girlfriends and their feelings don't matter and they're not seen as human, which is perhaps why they're murdered at a higher rate than any other group of women ever studied. The emotional consequences of prostitution are the same in widely varying cultures. 
whether it's high class or low class, whether it's legal or illegal, whether it's in a brothel, strip club, massage parlor, or the street. Symptoms of emotional distress in all forms of prostitution are off the charts. Depression, suicidality, post-traumatic stress disorder, um, substance abuse, <coughs> dissociation. Two-thirds of the women we interviewed and all of the people we interviewed in prostitution, two-thirds of them had PTSD at the same level of the most emotionally traumatized groups ever studied by psychologists. That would be combat vets, women who had just been raped, women seeking shelter from batterers, and also state-sponsored torture survivors. What's wrong with sex is what Johns themselves tell us about it. For example, if you look at it, it's paid rape. She has to do what you want. I use them like I might use any other amenity, a restaurant or a public convenience. It's like renting an organ for 10 minutes. In research interviews with Johns, we've found that their abuse of women extended to women who had not been prostituted yet. The Johns that bought the most women in prostitution were the most likely to commit sexually coercive acts with non-prostituting women. When women are turned into objects that men masturbate into, it causes immense psychological harm to the person acting as a receptacle. Please don't be fooled by people who tell you sex, buying sex is just another job. It's wrong to set aside a special class of women, those who are the most vulnerable among us for men's sexual use. What's wrong with paying for sex is it's the business of sexual exploitation. Thank you.